Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all this morning and welcome to worship here at Wisbeach Salvation Army. A very warm welcome to those watching online. Thank you for tuning in to us this morning. Oh, you know, it always makes me feel good seeing all of your bright, happy faces. And you know I'm being serious with that. I was pleasant out there, but it's just the truth. It's lovely to see you all this morning and welcome to this Sunday meeting. And today's theme, well, today is Trinity Sunday, a day where we commemorate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the theme of today's meeting is Triune Teacher. There's our word for the day already. Triune, meaning three in one. And that is exactly what we're going to be exploring together. How the three in one God applies to our personal lives, our personal faith journeys. How does the God three in one apply to me today? Well, hopefully we can unpack that this morning as we worship and journey together as his church. But yes, friends, that is the word of the day. If you remember any word today, remember the word triune. Yes, love it. So the triune teacher. Before we commence in our worship, before we give our offering of praise to the Lord, let's just come together and before him in prayer this morning. Let us pray. And dear Heavenly Father, we just give you the praise and the glory this morning as we come together to worship your holy name. I thank you for my friends in this room and for those watching at home that you would just draw close to them this day as we just explore the concept of Trinity Sunday, the triune teacher, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We just pray, Lord, that you will reveal to us in meaningful ways. We give you praise, we give you the glory and we praise your name on high. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The first of our songs this morning will be All Creatures of Our God and King. And those who know me enough to know, I choose my songs very thematically and allow these songs just to wash over you in this meeting. And this particular song speaks of the Trinity, the three in one. And let's make no mistake, the biggest misconception about the Godhead three in one, is that they're three separate things? Yes and no. They're three different variations of the one true God. So whether you worship the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit, you are still worshipping God. And this song exemplifies that this morning. There's number two in the songbook for those watching at home, or anybody who has a songbook on them this morning. But as always, the words will be on the screen for us to sing. I invite you to stand if you're able, and let us sing all creatures of our God and King. All creatures of our God and King.
Alleluia, says the song. You know, I often enjoy the videos where it has sweeping landscape backdrops. And actually, sorry to throw you in it here, Johnny, but last night Johnny sent me a text saying where he was in his prayer for reflections. And our Johnny and his family were at Hunt Stanton Seashore. Was it 20 to 9? Uh, 20 to 9 in the evening, and it was a beautiful sunset picture. And I tell you what, Johnny, I was rather envious you were able to spend your time in such a worshipful place. So, sadly, the screen doesn't do it justice, I'm afraid, but yes, it's always nice to find that meaningful space in where we can just be at home with the Lord. And sometimes the beautiful surroundings of nature and the weather can help with that. And what glorious weather we've been having lately. We're going to continue in our worship in this Trinity Sunday in the splendour of the King. How great is our God. 64 in the songbook, but as always, I'm repeating myself a lot this morning, but the words are on the screen. The splendour of the King, how great is our God. relishing in the sun, or embracing the Holy Spirit. It is still time with God, whichever avenue we devote ourselves to. And as you can see, we're going to be approaching our prayerful time of ministry and reflection this morning. And I must confess, I've had a last-minute change of plan. 
I often call those moments being led by the Spirit. I was going to do something a little bit more creative this morning, but I feel really convicted just to spend the time of prayerful and reflective of worship this morning. And I've decided to include a video instead of the band piece Guardian of My Soul. And it is often this song that I can draw the most deepest reflections I can with my God. And I won't be able to tell you why I feel so led and convicted to share this in our prayer ministry this morning. But friends, I do encourage you that this is still a time to spend with God. So as this next song just plays, washes over this place, whatever pops into your hearts, into your minds, whatever thoughts pop up, I encourage you and I plead with you to just give them over to God and whatever springs up in your hearts and in your minds, embrace them, choose them, devote yourselves to them and let this song just help cultivate that worshipful atmosphere of praise, of prayer, and of worship. And in which then I'll then give a closing prayer together. But let us listen and let us worship through the guardian of my soul.
let's pray. And Father God, we acknowledge you in our lives. We embrace all the things that you do and continue to do for us. And Father, we just pray that you will continually have your hand over us in all that we do and all that you have called us to be. Father, I pray for my friends here this morning, both in this room and watching at home, that whatever they were praying, whatever they were thinking about, whatever they were bringing before you this morning, Lord, I just pray that you will hear those prayers. We lift them up to you now, Lord God, and we give so, and we do so in acknowledgement of you. As we continue worshipping your name, as we continue journeying together as your church, we continue to pray, Lord, that you will continually reveal yourself to us in meaningful ways. And as always, Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory in all that we do, are, and say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I always enjoy that song. And it's actually my wife's favourite song, who coincidentally isn't here. She's on holiday in Spain. All right, the sun. We're coming to our Bible reading this morning, and as you can see, I've taken it from John's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. And as always, the words will be on the screen for you all to see. And the word says this, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, there is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. And may God have a blessing to his word this day. Amen. Those are the words from Jesus taken from John's Gospel. And though... I could probably appreciate you thinking, what's this got to do with Trinity Sunday? All will be revealed later in the meeting. I know, how exciting. But right now, we're just going to come to some announcements. And I'm neglected to write them down, so we're going to have to improvise here. <laughs> right, so this next week is the last week of regular programme. Because as you well know, or I think you may well know, tomorrow the building works commence here at Wiz Beach Salvation Army. So the week of the 13th, which is tomorrow, external works will begin. So in other words, we get a new flat roof, I believe, the hedge over there is being ripped out of place of the bin storage, and it's all outside work for next week. So program is still on. So the likes of Busy Bees will still be on Monday and Wednesday at 9.30. It's the last one for a few weeks, I know, sad faces. So if you know anybody who would benefit from this, do get them to come along. It would be great to have the last two and a half of the summer. So that's Monday and Wednesday, the usual times of 9.30. Same for the Luncheon Club. Luncheon Club will commence at 12 o'clock on a Tuesday. And like the Busy Bees, it will be the last one for a few weeks at least. So if you know anybody, who would like to pop along, then please come along. We're going to do quite a substantial meal for this one, though we don't anyway. We always do a substantial meal, but you get my drift. It'd be great to see you come along for that. The prayer gatherings. Now, the prayer gatherings will be unaffected, so if you want to pop along every Tuesday and Thursday and a private time of reflection on a Friday, then the time will still be open for that at 9.15. The last session of Alpha is on Monday, so we'll be concluding the Alpha course tomorrow at 6 o'clock. And that will then transition into a permanent Bible study group. But watch the next few weeks and the new sheets for more details about that. I will be away from the 19th, well after the Sunday meeting on the 19th of June for a couple of weeks. So the Bible study will probably commence when I return. 
and you can catch all of these fine details in the news sheet which are available at the back and in the foyer. Also, one last announcement, we are hiring. So, we are hiring for a position as the hall cleaner, so Christina's current slash old job. So, as you well know, Christina was successful in applying for the community manager's role. Congratulations, Christina. So, subsequently, her job will become open and will close on the 26th of June. So, if you know anybody who would like to apply for a role as the hall cleaner, get them to see myself for more details. I think that is the announcements. If not, do catch a new sheet. It will probably catch some details that I may have missed. Yes, you know, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 9, it says, and this is probably familiar to some of you, it says, This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He will give you strength. Anyone heard Jeremiah before? Anyone in that particular verse? It's quite a popular one. It's quite well known. And it's often a go-to for feeling that we're needing that sense of comfort. And the question remains here is, how do we incorporate the triune teacher, the trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day lives? How can we draw upon that strength? And I have a helpful illustration to help illustrate this for me today. Now, as you can see, we have three candles here. Well, excluding the fake candles. Battery operated, by the way. Pretty neat. But you will have three candles here. I don't know if the camera can see me or not, but all of you can see me. We have three candles. What these three candles represent is the Trinity. You have the Father, the Son, the Son doesn't want to catch on fire today, Jeepers, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't have a third candle holder, so the Holy Spirit is going to improvise hard with me here today. You will see that three distinct flames, they are all the same, they're all part of the one God. But so often we associate the three different things as three different entities. Do I worship the Father? Do I worship the Son? Do I worship the Holy Spirit? Quite often in our prayers we go, Oh Father God, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, however we pray. Granted, we all pray differently, we all acknowledge differently. But know that all three are the same. And when we incorporate the three together, it is bigger, it is stronger, and it is more relevant in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, I've got a confession to make. I haven't actually tested this illustration before, so I'm hoping this will work. <laughs> now, theoretically, when you bring the flames together, it will make one giant flame. I better tuck my tie out of the way here, haven't I? Or there's going to be a fourth flame here. Let's just see if this works. As Christians, we are encouraged to draw upon the triune teacher of the Trinity to bring together the three. <coughs> and hoping not to spill hot wax on my fingers. But let's just see if this works. Can anyone see that? Yeah. Yeah. The flame is noticeably getting bigger. It is stronger. It is more apparent. When they're separated, they're not as prominent. Oh gosh, I look at the flame and I got dazzled. <laughs> Don't look at a naked flame of the naked eye. But you can see, when you bring the three together, the flame becomes bigger. It becomes more prominent. And the wax is dripping hard here. But you will see that if you bring the three together, they are more noticeable. They are more relevant. And they are more evident in our day-to-day -day lives. And we as Christians are called to not forget one of the other, but to remember the three in our day-to-day -day lives. Sorry, I'm not taking any chances. You know what I'm like when I'm preaching. We are encouraged, friends, to remember the three together. For if God is a great big God, if he gives that source of strength and encouragement, it is more noticeable when we incorporate the three together. The word of God, 
the ministry of Jesus and the daily guidance of the Holy Spirit. Friends, when we incorporate the three together, our paths and our journeys with God is more visible. It is more easy to see. It is more easy to sense. Remember the three flames being brought together to make one big flame. Because friends, our God is a great big God when you bring the three together. And I've, clued, I've given a clue what my next song is this morning. And I'm doing something a bit different this morning. Um, we're going to do a bit of our YP ministry this morning. We're going to sing, Our God is a Great Big God. And we're going to sing this with the Holy Spirit, the Son and the Father, incorporated as the Triune God. Because our God is a great big God. Now let's involve some action, so I better get me stretches in for this one. I've got to tell you, I haven't done an action song for quite a while, but I'm hoping you can join me. So, if you're able to, I want you to stand as we take part in this song. If there's any youngsters, this is your son to shine. Anyone want to join me at the front? There are some spaces next to me. If not, it's going to be a one-man show, but hey, I have the faithful congregation in front of me. I do know the actions, so if you want to see the actions, then just see myself. And then we'll take it from there. Now, I don't know how, how uh, loud this song is going to be, so Christina, could you be on standby at the dial, just in case it blows our heads off? <laughs> because we don't want that. Friends, our God is a great big God. Let us sing and let us take, move some shapes for the Lord. Our God is a great big God.
We're now going to approach our time of worship through our offering this morning. So as our Brenda comes along with the collection plates, I'm going to ask our Christina to play the instrument of the iPods as we give in our offerings this morning. Thank you both. Whenever I think of three in one, I have to think of Aqua Fresh Toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> the God of Aqua Fresh Toothpaste, or an apple, that's a triune thing. Or, you know, well, there's many examples of what triune could be. But it always reminds me of toothpaste. Now, we're looking at that today. And actually, the Salvation Army, their Articles of Faith, Doctrine 3 says, We believe that there are three persons in the Godhead the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, undivided in essence and co-equal in power and glory. Now we go over these doctrines of faith in our membership classes, isn't that right Christina? Nudge, nudge. And it's these very articles of belief that we encompass all that we do as the Salvation Army. We believe in the Godhead, the three in one. Now as I said at the beginning of the meeting, the biggest misconception is thinking that they're three separate entities. 
And often people outside the faith think that Christians, oh, they worship a spirit, or they worship, they worship a prophet, and they worship God. How can you worship all three? Jeepers Christians, get it together. But it is not about that. But that is the biggest misconception. And the biggest thing we must learn is that the three are incorporated together. It is three sources of the one God. That is what triune means. It is three in one. Three in one. And if you have to remember at the first truth patient to remember that word, then, then so be it. Three in one, the triune God. Now last week we celebrated Pentecost, didn't we? The birth of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the unlocking of potential as God's people. Last week was Pentecost, and this week is Trinity Sunday. There's a lot of themes this time of year I've noticed for Sundays. But either way, I think this is very fitting that this would follow Pentecost. Now the Spirit does not ignore the Father, and the Spirit does not ignore the Son. They work harmoniously together, creating that one big flame of God. Sure, they're separate lights, but they create one big flame of God. So as I said, how is the triune teacher in our daily lives? What's this got to do with me and you in our daily walks of life? Well, <laughs> I'm going to be teacher today. Not quite a triune teacher, but there are three short things that the God teaches through. And first of all, that is the Word of God. The Word of God. You know that dynamic with children and parents? Like, Mother Knows Best? I believe that's a Disney song, isn't it? I'm not going to break out in theatrics, you please, to know. Mother Knows Best? No, it is a case of parents being the sole source of inspiration and guidance for their children. Isn't that right, children in the room? Yes. <laughs> Point is, you listen to your parents. Mother Knows Best. Or often what I was personally told, what I say goes. <laughs> what I say goes. I always, I will never forget that. I'll never forget those words. They're burned into my mind forever. <laughs> and just like that, I've got a lot of flashbacks. That's for never tell. See me at tea time. But what I say goes. And often the word of God is God saying to his children, what I say in here goes. And it is often we say our Heavenly Father, because He is our Father. He is the sole source of our inspiration and guidance through His Word. I mean, granted, it's a jolly tough, tough thing to read at the best of times, the Bible. But this is something that gradually gets more and more understandable as time goes on. Time is our biggest friend here. But either way, as I, I digress... We consider the scriptures as our daily bread, a means of spiritual sustenance. And actually, Jesus said here, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did. And now he offers you the true bread from heaven. Now, Jesus is using the analogy of bread, because bread is a pretty universal food for ourselves, it sustains us, it is sustenance. And what he's saying here is that the scriptures are the bread of heaven. I think it's God, you know, the great Jehovah, isn't it, that has the words bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Well, we always want more scripture, don't we, friends? Yes. <laughs> That's the spirit. But the bread of heaven is essentially the scriptures and the Father's way of giving that guidance as the heavenly Father. Everyone heard the term Abba? before. Now Abba is an Old Testament phrase coined which translate as father, but in an affectionate way. Abba, father. When one says Abba, they are doing so with passion and sincerity in their hearts. And Abba was a phrase coined by the Israelites of old. As they journeyed through the desert, as they established the settlements, they referred to God as Abba, that affectionate father. Abba. Now, the Father's status and teaching was given prominence in the New Testament through Jesus. Jesus essentially acknowledged God as his Father. And because Jesus acknowledged him as Father, so did his disciples. 
He was the father, or rather, he is the father that Jesus trusted. Romans 8.15 says, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit. When he adopted you as his own children, now we call him Abba, Father. Once we have that sense of just coming in communion with God, we have that affectionate relationship with our Father. Somehow the scriptures speak to us. God has given us that guidance, and we refer to him as Abba. Well, personally, I don't call him Abba, but I do see him in that same sincerity of Abba. Whether you call him Abba or not, it's very much up to you. Now, Jesus' own life and character in these scriptures defines his meaning. Worshipping God through Jesus is to know the fatherly relationship of compassion and of care. Now, that probably sounds like Greek, what I've just said there, isn't it? But you know your own faith journeys. We worship Jesus for a reason, and that is because he bridges the gap between us and the Father. The Almighty Creator, the Eternal God, revealed in the Old Testament, who did all of those great things, is the Abba Father to whom we come <laughs> through Jesus. So you can see how they're connected already. You can see how they're connected. We are connected to God through Jesus. We are connected to our Heavenly Father through Jesus. Now, God the Father reveals much to us through his scriptures, the inspired word of God. Though they're, different, though they're written by different people, it is still the bread of heaven, the inspired word of God. It is the context of our daily lives, however we choose to spin it. But even way, friends, I want you to remember one thing. It is still a loving, heavenly Father who gives guidance, clarity, and peace. And we are encouraged to draw upon those scriptures, to seek that and to sense that. This is why I have that time on prayer gathering in the morning, whether people join me or not, it's up to them. But that is me seeking the kingdom of God through his word first. It is the bread of heaven. It is the bread that sustains my spiritual journey personally. <coughs> And will be the same for each of you, however you choose to engage with the Bible. Bible apps are often very good, easy bite-sized snippets of, of the Bible, which is hard to digest when it's the big book. But the Word of God is how the Father speaks to us most poignantly, and how we can come into relationship as children and parents in the grand sense. Get a look from the children in the room now. And the, <laughs> the second teaching point is the ministry of Jesus. Now, Jesus was the benchmark on how we conduct ourselves in those holy examples. And John 14 says this, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Not only Jesus was the benchmark in conducting ourselves accordingly in good Christian examples, but we are called to devote ourselves to him, to disciple with him, to come through the Father. We've already covered that, so I'm not going to repeat myself. But Jesus says, and it's very well known in the scripture, to come through him to the Father. Now Jesus was the wise, the anointed, the teacher. He was the teacher for his disciples and actually for us as well. And he was very wise in his teaching was Jesus. He was very wise. He instilled in his disciples a progressive understanding of faith and holiness. A progressive understanding. He was that teacher. Now, this reminds me of a story I heard. Now, somebody I know was pestering his parents to want him to drive. He was desperate to drive so much. Mum, Dad, when can I drive? 
When can I drive? When can I go and get my license? When can I drive down to the supermarket? He was so impatient. And for the life or reason, he could not remember why. He couldn't absorb why his parents wouldn't let him do it. And his parents said this to him quite simply. Well, when you're not 10 years old, then we'll let you drive. That's a good point, isn't it? We don't have any 10-year-old drivers, do we? Point is, he wasn't ready to drive. He wasn't ready to learn. He wasn't ready to take that next step. But eventually, of course, he will. And his parents said that to him. It wasn't me. I wasn't the example, by the way. I just hastened to add. But at the right time, the understanding to grasp that concept will come. And Jesus said to his disciples, at the right time, the Spirit will come. Your understanding will be broadened and your faith journeys will develop at the right time. I think some of his disciples were feverishly wanting the answers to everything at once. And Jesus being the wise teacher, look, like Mr. Gunston was, the right teaching at the right time is what makes a good teacher. And Jesus said to his disciples, not yet. Let it be a progressive thing. Let it be a progressive thing. Jesus was a good example of how to come to the Father. Jesus himself, he prayed, he fasted, he devoted himself to God. Jesus was... He's very much like you and me. Though he was fully God, he was still fully man. He still knew to rely upon his Father, and he teaches us to do the very same. Jesus, the sinless man, the perfect man, even he came before the Lord in prayer. And that teaches us to do the same. <laughs> Nobody's Jesus, are they? Nobody is perfect. Oh, wouldn't that be the day? Even Jesus, the perfect man, prayed and came to God. And friends, I encourage you, however you come to God, and I've said this multiple times, it's very much down to you. However you are most in tune with God, come to him. Come to him. Because Jesus did the very same. And I promise you, as Jesus promised his disciples, it is a progression over time. You will all be able to drive as the example heralds. Ironically, you can all drive and I can't, but that's not beside the point. At the perfect time, that understanding and our faith journeys will be unlocked on a daily basis sometimes. It's a case of just journeying and progressing. And life's a journey, as they say, isn't it? Whether you're 2, 22 or 82, life's a journey. You learn as you go. And Jesus instilled that in his disciples. He taught that to his disciples. And for ourselves, we must recognise that the Spirit will carry us forward. It is the Spirit that... Okay, try again. It is the Spirit that enables us to embark upon the faith journey. It is the Spirit that guides our steps. It is the Spirit that allows us to move forward. As I do to the camera. To move forward in our faith journey. The Spirit eventually came for the disciples of Jesus' day, did it not? He promised that. The same spirit that guided the spirit and spread the church and established the church of the world is the same spirit that guides us personally. It is the same spirit. And that draws me on to our third and final point, and that is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You see the triune God right here. The word of the Father, the ministry of Jesus, and the guidance of the Spirit. That is the overabundant flame of the candle. Those three things. It is those three things. Now, another example I held is when I first got into a speech, actually. It was um, middle of the pandemic, so I believe. And I left college, graduated, got commissioned. Hooray, into the world we go. Arrived in Whiz Beach, nothing's happening. Right now, what? There was no Sunday meetings, there was no programme. <laughs> It was an interesting time, was it not? 
at my official welcome meeting, it was nobody here. So, nothing makes you feel more welcome than an empty hall, bless you, bless you. But I got to Wisbeach and I thought to myself, now what, now what do we do? It was in those moments that I was like, God, may your spirit just guide me here right now. It's all well and good I meet people here and there. Which was lovely, by the way. It was lovely to meet people in your homes or outside your homes or whatever the context was. It was still the unknown. It was still, what do we do here? This wasn't what college trained me for, as you could probably appreciate. But it is in those moments of the unknown going forward that we rely upon the Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That is what the Spirit teaches us. The Holy Spirit is an ever-changing direction sometimes, and we must be open to that. Now, General Frederick Coots, the 8th General of the Salvation Army, says this, and I appreciate you won't be able to read from there, so I'm just going to repeat his quote. He said, a man who takes up dinghy sailing does not know immediately where the wind is coming from. Winds do not blow steadily. They freshen and die away and then come in from a new quarter. He has to haul his sheet a little when the wind moves aft or towards starboard, and sometimes change direction when faced with a calm patch. So must the believer watch for the movements of the Spirit among his fellows and in his own heart if he would be carried progressively forward into the truth. Now he compared the Holy Spirit to dinghy sailing. Anyone been dinghy sailing? I certainly haven't. Take his word for it though. He compares the moving of the Spirit to be unpredictable sometimes. In other words, what he encourages me and what he encourages you to do is to be open to the Spirit. Life can take you in so many different directions sometimes, and it is the Spirit's guidance in which we get our compass and move forward. And sometimes we need to take that time in our reflections, in our devotions, in our worship, just to engage the Spirit of God and say, Lord, may I be used to the extent of your kingdom. Guide my steps, Lord God, for the Spirit it is like the unpredictable winds. The, the world is the unpredictable winds. We have to be open to the direction the wind is coursing. And though the direction changes in our lives sometimes, with different chapters and different things that go on, it is still the same spirit. And we are still called to be open to that spirit. And friends, let me assure you, from the bottom of my heart, his spirit will guide you. Whether you even sense or realise the Spirit's with you or not, <laughs> sometimes it's nice to have that extra bit of clarity. And the Spirit is almost like the treasures, as the Proverbs describe it. Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. For wisdom is more profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies, Nothing you desire can compare with her. Choose my instruction rather than silver, and knowledge rather than pure gold. What a joy it is to have the Spirit illuminate his word and our lives. It is the life in the Spirit that is more precious than rubies. The Spirit unlocks our calling, it unlocks our potential, and it unlocks how we see and engage with God. The Spirit is the key. <coughs> so, the triune teacher, relishing in the teaching from God, via the Father, via the Son, and via the Holy Spirit. If you remember one thing, friends, not only the word triune, I'll be testing you at tea time, but, these three things. The triune God is alive and burning in these three candles through the word of God, the ministry of Jesus, and the guidance from the Spirit. Those three things together make such a powerful God, makes a relevant God, makes a God that makes and is so alive in us today. God is alive. He is a great big God. And I say hallelujah for those teaching points. 
Hallelujah for God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The triune God. The triune teacher. Now whatever teaching you need this day, whatever source you engage with God the best with, know that God, the triune teacher, reveals himself meaningfully and powerfully in his word through his son Jesus and through the burning of his Holy Spirit. God is alive and though interpreted in three different ways, he is still the same God and he is still the same teacher. And how you engage with that teaching as disciples of Jesus is very much down to you. But we're going to have a time of prayer for contemplation now and we're going to sing this next song together. Still hide me under your wings. For if we need that extra prompting, if we need that extra bit of revelation in his teaching, we need to come under the shelter of his wings. Because sometimes the monotony of the world gets in the way of seeing God. If we come before him meaningfully and take shelter under his wings, he will cultivate a meaningful spirit in us. And friends, let me be the first to say, though the Spirit can't always be sensed all the time, it doesn't mean that the Spirit is absent. If we embrace who we are, embrace who we've been made to be, then we are living out that calling, and we are relishing in the triune teacher. There's no songbook number for this song, I don't think, if not, I haven't looked hard enough. But I want this song just to be a song of prayerful reflection and contemplation. Whether you need to go to the prayer circle, the mercy seat, or pray in your seats or with each other, ask those questions to each other, to God, to yourselves. What teacher am I relishing in this day? As the song plays, I pray that you're able to be with God in whatever way suits you this morning. Let us pray and let us worship. Hide me under your wings.
Holy Spirit, we come before your throne of grace once again. And we take refuge under your wings this morning. Wings, Lord, that give us comfort, that give us peace, and give us an overabundance of your love. And Father, I pray that for my friends here this morning. Whatever their prayers, their hearts and minds are, Father, your word declares that you hear all prayer. And Father, we give that over to you this morning. I thank you for who you've made my friends to be so uniquely and wonderfully made. And as we go into our days, we just pray, Lord, that you will be our guidance, you will be our strength, and you will be our source of inspiration. In your precious name we pray all of these things, your name that is above every name. Amen. We're going to have a final hymn together, Eternal Father Strong to Save. And quite popular, this song is often sung on Remembrance Sundays, quite popular amongst the armed forces, so I believe. But it's actually the last verse which I draw an inspiration from this day. Verse 4 says, O Trinity of love and power, our brethren of shield in danger's hour, from rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wherever they go. And ever there rise to thee glad hymns of praise from the land and sea. So it is the Trinity that protects us in our days, that gives us that guidance, that love and that peace as we go from this place into our days. So not just a Remembrance Sunday song, not just an Armed Forces song, but indeed a Triune God song and testimony. I invite you to stand if you are able this morning. 11 in the songbook for those watching at home or in this room. The words will be on the screen. Let this be our testimony of the triune God and the triune teacher, the eternal Father, strong to save.
actually, though we've just sung it, I'm actually going to read the fourth verse of that last song as our benediction as we go into this day and into this next week. O Trinity of love and power, our brethren shield in danger's hour. From rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wherever they go. And ever let them rise to thee, glad hymns of praise from land and sea. Amen. Amen. Friends, a blessing and a privilege as always to worship with you this Trinity Sunday. And as you go into your days and into this week, it is my prayer that the teachings of the triune teacher will wash over you and dwell in your hearts. And you are relishing in the teaching from God, from Father, from Son, and from Holy Spirit. Do join us for tea and fellowship as well. And Thank you for joining us for those online. God's blessing be with you this day. And as always, be blessed, be a blessing, and may God bless you.